Perhaps this is how we should frame the question forever. Rather than asking, what is your favorite book? Let's ask, what continues to pull you back? Caleb Azuma Nelson had no idea that open water would continue to pull me back. Or did he? Today, we're gonna take a look at this debut novel by the British writer and talk about why it's more than just a story of boy meets girl. And don't worry, I'll be as specifically vague as possible. There's no spoilers in this. Let's get into it. The story starts out with two young artists meeting in a bar through a mutual friend. She is a dancer and he is a photographer, and they both bond over their art and find that they have an immediate connection that neither can really ignore. But they both try to because she is in a relationship with this mutual friend who's named Samuel. Side note, Samuel is one of the few people in the book who actually has a name. The main character's names aren't revealed at any point throughout the book. Shortly after, the woman ends her relationship with Samuel, not entirely because of the guy, but kind of because of the guy. So their relationship with one another starts off somewhat messy, and I appreciated that was a reflection of what we see in real life. It's not always off to a smooth start. One theme that emerges and re-emerges throughout the book is the idea of being seen. The lead female character expressly states that she had never met someone or been in a relationship that had all-encompassing of prior to being with the lead male character. And I honestly think that is so beautiful and it was made possible by the level of vulnerability that he was able to display with her. In my birthday book haul video, I spoke about how every birthday of mine, I like to set an affirmation for that year and this year's was related to romance and partnership. One of the most frustrating parts of dating is the lack of emotional vulnerability shown from people we're attempting to get to know and better understand. And the fact that this character, who again, is a black man was able to open up in those ways is counter to the behaviors that we see in real life. It's not only rare to see that displayed in literature, but it's also a refreshing take that I would love to see more in our everyday experiences, us letting our guards down and being open to some level of uncertainty, which reminds me of a passage that I really love. It's like the summer has been one long night and you have just woken up. It's like you both dived into open water, but you have resurfaced with her elsewhere. It's like you formed a joint, only to fracture, only to break. It is an ache you have not known and do not know how to name. It is terrifying. And yet you knew what you were getting into. You know that to love is both to swim and to drown. You know to love is to be a whole, partial, a joint, a fracture, a heart, a bone. It is to bleed and heal. It is to be in the world, honest. It is to place someone next to your beating heart in the absolute darkness of your inner and trust that they will hold you close. To love is to trust. To trust is to have faith. How else are you meant to love? You knew what you were getting into, but taking the underground, returning home with no certainty of when you'll see your next, it is terrifying. So you may have noticed that passage was in second person. In fact, the entire book is in second person, so it is full of you statements. This isn't something that I've experienced before in a book, and it does an amazing job of putting you directly into the shoes of the protagonist. That passage also featured a bit of repetition, which is also prominent throughout the book. Almost like poetry, there are phrases that are repeated, not only for emphasis, but also for significance. In chapter 14, which is about midway through the book, we see the repeated phrase, it's summer now, which we don't see again. But if you pay closer attention, there are phrases that almost carry a thread throughout the book, such as that reference, a joint, a fracture, a break, and language fails us. Before we hop into the real meat of the video, I'd love for you to give this video a thumbs up so that it can spread to even more people who might enjoy the review. I mentioned at the beginning that this isn't just a love story. Since our main character is a black man, a good portion of the book showcases how black men move throughout the world and process their emotions. We watch him grapple with love, vulnerability, and grief all against the backdrop of his blackness and fitting the description. The omnipresent anxieties of potential police encounters, the forced acceptance that you don't know whether you would arrive home without incident or live to fear another day. And for those of you who don't fully understand how big of a threat the presence of police are to the black body, let me play a little video for you. We actually have a line that we do at our house. We practice this thing. What is it? I'm Ariel Sky Williams. I'm eight years old. I'm unarmed and I have nothing that will hurt you. It's just kind of a thing we practice at our house. That's the talk. 
And just about every black family, at least in America, has some version of that talk at some point. You have to be careful when you're out there in this world because this world's not gonna always be honest or fair to you. Having to explain to a child that their bodies were born a threat and are perceived as violent and dangerous is asking them to live a life so constrained and stifled. It's one riddled with fear that you carry every day of your life. And it's not just your fear that you carry. If it tells you to be quiet, be quiet, do everything that you can to get back to me. I see it uh, weighing on you, and I don't want it to weigh on you. I'm just worried about Donovan. I'm worried about him now. Who are you guys talking about? Her, 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 my nephew and her cousin. I don't want him to be shot. I don't want him to go to jail. It's also the fear of your mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, nephew, niece, aunt, uncle, and so on. So carrying this fear, this generational fear with you, it's clear how this would have an effect on how you express yourself and how you operate in your relationships, both platonic and romantic. We also see the main character use other mediums to help express himself. With music through artists like Kendrick Lamar and Kelsey Liu. With art through artists like Shola Ololare and Lynette Yoram Boache. With books through writers like Zadie Smith and James Baldwin. And with movies like Boys in the Hood and Moonlight. There are so many more and I'm excited to explore them in depth and you might be too. So I'm going to drop a link down in the description that documents the media and artists that are mentioned throughout. And on the book being titled Open Water. Well, there's like multiple levels to it. Um, like first and foremost, it speaks about this kind of, this openness and this vulnerability that you want to be able to have in your everyday, but isn't always possible for black people. Um, mm. And I think that's, yeah, that's really like the primary thing, like being, being able to be out in the open and free and that tug when you know there are other things in the water that, that might stop you from doing that. I went into this book thinking that it would be a love story and it ended up being about so much more. Really, it's an examination of the intersection of vulnerability and masculinity, particularly masculinity within Black culture. It's a book about seeing and being seen for who you truly are, not just a facade that you present to the world as a means of getting by. It's about trading survival in a world that sees you merely as a body, a black body, for thriving in brief and fleeting spaces that offer freedom and joy. It's about juggling feelings of new love, loss, freedom, grief, excitement, sorrow, happiness, uncertainty, and so much more that I cannot even find the language for. It's an important and accurate depiction of the lived experience of Black people because what Azuma Nelson manages to do is follow a character through rather mundane everyday occurrences while perfectly illustrating how exhausting and anxiety inducing even that can be. It's also an ode to Black arts and artists and this is all beautifully packaged within just 160 four pages. This was absolutely the most perfect piece of literature I've ever read. My physical copy is littered with highlights and notes. If you're Black, read this now. If you want to better understand the Black lived experience, read this now. This is so much more important than words could ever capture. Language fails us.